Now that we've covered the next round of operators in the observable class, it's time to turn our attention to case study EX3, which shows how to apply these operators in practice. Part one of this case study shows how to use various RxJava observable operators to asynchronously create, multiply, and display big fraction objects, even in the presence of errors. It also shows how single operators can be used with these observable operators to good effect. As usual, you can find the source code for this example in the link at the bottom of this slide. So now we're in my IntelliJ project for case study EX3, and let's start by taking a look at the EX3 file itself. This is the main entry point into the test program, and we're going to take a look at two of the methods under test, one called test fraction exception one, and the other called test fraction exception two. As usual, we register these with the async task barrier, along with some other methods we'll talk about in part two of this lesson. Then we go ahead and run all the tests, which run those operations asynchronously, run the test methods asynchronously as asynchronous tasks. And then we use a blocking get call on the single that's returned from run tasks in order to wait until all the other tests are done to make sure everything's finished before we return from the main thread here to avoid having the program shut down before the computations finish. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the observable EX class, which is where these methods appear. We have a couple things. We have a random number generator field that we're going to use for some of the tests. And then we're going to take a look at the first method under test, which is called test fraction exception one. And this is going to test exception handling observables using the on error return exception handling method. So let's go ahead and take a look first. We create a string buffer that's going to keep track of where the operations are occurring so we can log everything correctly. And then we create ourselves a function called error handler. And you can see this function takes a throwable and it takes a big fraction. And it's basically going to go ahead and indicate what exception occurred and then it's going to check to see whether the exception that occurred was an arithmetic exception, which occurs when we try to divide by zero. And if it was, we're just going to convert that exception to the value zero. Otherwise, if it was not the arithmetic exception, which would be rather odd, given that's the only exception thrown in this test, we're going to go ahead and rethrow the exception. So given that error handler function, let's go ahead now and take a look at the actual observable stream. We're going to create ourselves an array of integers, which we call denominators and that's going to have the values 3, 4, 2, 0, and 1. You'll see that the 0 is going to end up triggering an arithmetic exception. So let's see how that's actually going to happen. So the first thing we do is we take the denominators array and we use the observable from array factor method to create an observable stream using the contents in that array. We then use RxJava's flat map concurrency idiom to reduce and multiply big fraction objects in the computation thread pool. And you can see we do this as follows. It's a bit long here, but it's important to see what it's doing. So flat map is the operator that we're going to be calling here. It takes a set of denominators or a group of denominators that are produced from the from array factor method. And the first thing it does is it goes ahead and it creates a big fraction using the observable from callable factor method. And this big fraction will generate a random number and then it'll use whatever the denominator happens to be. Now at some point, in fact, very specifically at the fourth iteration here, that denominator will be zero, and that will trigger an arithmetic exception. So what we do then is we go ahead and we arrange to run all these computations in a background thread using the computation scheduler by using the subscribe on operator. And then we put the on error return method here. If there's no exception, in other words, when we have values three, four, two, and so on, then we don't have to worry. It's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna, the on error return operator will not be used at all. However, when an arithmetic exception is called, the error handler, which we defined up here, will be invoked. And as you can see, that will go ahead and replace the exception with the big fraction zero constant. So we then go ahead and log the big fractions, which will either be a normal big fraction or it will be a zero if an exception occurred. And then we go ahead and perform big fraction multiplications. So we're gonna multiply each of those big fractions by some constant. You can see this is the constant, it's just a big reduced fraction. And what'll come out of all this, all this computation will basically be a, a stream of reduced and multiplied big fractions. And what we do in that case is we then go ahead and use the filter operator in order to remove any big fraction results that are less than or equal to zero. So the one that was the exception handling result that where we replaced the arithmetic exception 
with the value zero, that will be winnowed out or filtered out from further consideration. And then the last thing we do is we use the collect terminal operation to collect the results into a list. And then we use the flat map completable method, which will now be being called on a single because collect returns a single. Flat map completable will be called and that will go ahead and print the list. And you can see what we do here is we are going to go ahead and convert the list into a single. We're gonna go ahead and display it by essentially printing every element in our list of big fractions in mixed string format. And then we, go, sorry, we go ahead and append that to, to the string buffer. And then we display that when we're all done. And the last thing that is returned from the print list method is a completable that's returned from ignore element. And that's used by the async task barrier framework to synchronize with the completion of this asynchronous computation. So that's the end of the first method we're going to look at, which is test fraction exception one. And you can see it used the on error exception handling method to replace exceptions with the value zero, in this case, the arithmetic exception. Let's now go ahead and take a look at test fraction exception two. And this is going to show observable exception handling, except this time we're going to use the on error resume next method, which has slightly different behavior. Much of this is the same as before. We make ourselves a string buffer, and that's used to log the data, even if it's occurring in a background thread. We then go ahead and create ourselves a list of denominators. This has one extra value, so we go 3, 4, 2, 0, 1, 5, and you'll see how that gets used. Of course, the big issue here is the zero, as we saw before. And this time we go ahead and make a new method, a new local variable rather, called log and return empty observable. So what happens here is when an exception occurs, we log the exception, and then we're going to return an empty observable. And that's what's going to be used to keep resuming the processing at that point. There's lots of things we could return there. We're just going to return an empty observable. And now let's go ahead and see what we do. We take the denominators, which are coming in as a list, because we have a list of denominators this time. Last time, if you notice, we had an array of denominators. This time we have a list of denominators. So we use the from iterable factor method, and then we go ahead and use the map method here in order to generate a random big fraction, which could very well have that denominator that we see be zero. You'll notice that we're not using the flat map concurrency idiom in this example. We're just demonstrating something slightly different. And so what'll happen in this case is when the denominator is zero, that'll trigger the arithmetic exception. And we are then going to handle that using the on error resume next exception handling method. And what that does is that will terminate the stream at that point by returning observable empty. So this, the computations will not fail, it's just that we're replacing an exception with an empty observable. Again, not the only way to do things, just to show the example. Now we go ahead and collect the results into a list. And you'll notice in this particular case that the, uh, it's the non-empty big fraction. So any big fractions that were emitted and, and uh, basically created before we hit the zero are going to be the ones that are going to be considered in this case. And then the last thing we do here is we go ahead and use the flat map completable method, which is called on the single return from collect to print the list and store it in the string buffer. And then it'll go ahead and print that out. That's just like the code we looked at just a moment ago. So given that, let's go ahead and run the actual program. And we're just going to take a look at the first two methods. We're not going to look at all of them. We're going to look at the other ones in the subsequent part of this lesson. So here you can see test fraction exception goes ahead. And if you recall, there were five uh, of the various denominators. And here's the one that was ending up being a uh, zero. So of course, we end up with zero. And you'll see that we filtered out anything that had a zero. So we only get the ones that were not we only multiply and produce the results that were non-zero. In other words, the ones that didn't have an exception occur. Test fraction, exception two. Once again, we got the divide by zero exception, except in this case, we stopped. As soon as we hit that, we didn't go any further. We resumed the processing by returning an empty observable. So at that point, we were done. So those are the results from running the first two methods in the case study EX3 for this observable example.